Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here to bring you a hopefully informative video sharing my recommendations for where to start with Junji Ito's work or a reading guide for those of you that are interested in this work as well as recommendations even for those of you that have already started his work and are trying to figure out what to pick up next. At this point in time, at the time of filming this at least, I have read 14 of his translated books and so I do think I have a pretty good sense of what his work is like and can definitely point you in the direction of my favorites at least. Of course everyone's preferences are going to be different but hopefully this will be helpful. I will have some timestamps down below if you want to jump around in the video. All that being said, let's get started. First I want to give a quick summary of Junji Ito and his work and so if you're not familiar he is a Japanese horror manga author and is very prolific and very well beloved in Japan and as well as around the world. He is known for writing incredibly creepy, gruesome, disturbing, books with correspondingly very creepy, disturbing, and gruesome imagery. So it's definitely not for everyone. He plays a lot into body horror, which is something that I enjoy, which I describe as any kind of manipulation of the body. And so often you will have stories where the people start to have things that are growing out of their arms or legs or bugs coming out of their mouths or different transformations. And so it can be very grotesque, but it also can be very beautiful because he is a fantastic fantastic, incredibly talented artist. And the stories themselves are very weird and very creative. They do have some similar themes, which you will see kind of played out as I talk about some of his books. He deals a lot with suicide, so content warnings for that, and just really addresses some common themes and things that he likes to play around with. So you will start to see some similarities in his work, which in some ways I would say is a criticism because at this point, again, having read 14 of his books, I do find that sometimes they don't feel as fresh because some of the stories will remind me of stories I've read before by him. But I do consider him to be the best horror manga author I have ever read. I love a lot of graphic novels done by American and other non-Japanese artists and while I really enjoy them I gotta say that Junji Ito is king in my opinion. Everything else does fall a little bit pale in comparison. So he is one of my all-time favorite authors, all-time favorite graphic novel artists and I really do recommend his work. If you have not tried already, highly recommend checking it out. I know that his work is not always available through libraries but this is one of these times where I do think it's worth the investment. I'm going to be showing you I have a fairly good size collection of his work. I'm trying to collect all of the books that I love and I do think they're worth owning. They're just great to flip through. My husband just loves to look at the imagery as well and they're just again beautiful pieces of art. The kind of thing that I like to have on my coffee table but maybe that says more about my taste in um, how I like to decorate. But anyway let's move along. Next I want to go through a quick ranking of the 14 books that I have read give you a bit of a synopsis and an idea of why I placed the book in the ranking order that I did. And so starting at the bottom, working my way up to the top, at number 14 we have No Longer Human. And this is very different than most of his work and the reason it's at the bottom is that it is not an original work by him as an author. Instead it is him writing the manga or graphic version of a very classic Japanese story. Looking at other people's reviews, those that love the the original story, really appreciate this graphic work, but I will say that if you are looking to experience Junji Ito's writing style, his graphic work, this is not representative of that because it's very much to my understanding, I've not read the original novel, but it is a very true retelling and the themes are very different. It is a story of a man, it is very depressing and dark, but not in the way I will describe the later books. So for me this book did not work because it really just did not feel like his writing and more so, even though it was of course done with his artwork, it didn't get to lean into the strange and weird and grotesque imagery that I normally love because that wasn't part of the original work. So I was very confused why he actually did this adaptation. I did not feel that it worked very well and unfortunately I do not recommend it. Then at number 13 we have Frankenstein and this is a retelling of Frankenstein. And so very similar to the last one, it is a very true retelling of the original work and so I appreciated it as a adaptation but at the same time it really didn't get to show off his flair for his own creativity because he was sticking closely to the text and while of course there is some horror imagery described within Frankenstein again I felt that it was very limited in terms of what he could do in terms of artwork. At the end of this collection there is some short stories that are unrelated
related to Frankenstein and those were interesting. So it's one to check out, but I'll be honest, I do think again, it just doesn't really give him a chance to demonstrate what he can do. So it's not a place that I would start if you're new to Junji Ito because you won't get a really good grasp of what he is capable of. You'll just get a good retelling of Frankenstein, quite frankly. Then at number 12, we have Tomy, and this is a book that uh, is collected as if it is a full manga novel. However, it actually was originally written as episodic little shorts that the author wrote, I believe for some sort of newspaper or different periodical. And so each story centers around the same girl named Tomi who these men are obsessed with. And the stories to my mind felt very repetitive because they become obsessed with her, terrible things ensue, and then you have another story that follows a very similar setup. And so I would say that I like the beginning of this story, but it became very tiring for me to read because it's actually one of his longest work. And again, you're just reading the same story over and over again. I think that this would be a lot more fun to perhaps read one story per week or however often the books or stories were originally coming out. But as a complete collection in one book, reading them back to back, I found very exhausting. So honestly, not one that I really loved. Of his original work, I do think that this is the weakest in terms of reading as a collected piece. Then we have a Censor, which is one of his newer books, and this is one that is more of a cohesive story as opposed to some of the short stories I'll be referencing later on. But the reason this one is so low down on the list is that in terms of the story, while it is technically one story, it felt all over the place to me. I found the narrative to be very fragmented, I found it hard to follow, and while it has some really beautiful imagery in it, as a story, I found it to be very weak. Then at number 10, we have Dissolving Classroom, which is a collection of short stories that are all interconnected because essentially they all involve at one point or another a classroom that begins to dissolve. I believe it is inspired by other horror stories that are very popular in Japan so I think there were some references that went a little bit over my head and I did enjoy these stories for the most part. Again they're kind of gruesome and they're kind of fun. You get a whole bunch of students in high school and just the terrible things that happen but again this one struggles with the fact that it is very repetitive and you're kind of reading the same story just remixed over and over again for the collection. I thought it was better done than something like Tomi and was a little bit more creative in the different approaches, but definitely not his strongest. Then at number nine, we have Romina, and this is one cohesive story. It centers around a planet that appears out of a wormhole. The scientist that discovers it names it after his daughter, Romina, and she becomes quite famous as the face behind this planet. However, this planet is perhaps a little bit more sentient than they realized, and it begins to attack other planets and stars is coming for Earth. So all of humanity, everyone on Earth basically panics and goes after this girl and treats her as the cause of their problems and goes about trying to crucify her in order to save themselves. This book definitely leans into a lot of the themes that you'll see within Junji Ito's work and I think it's very iconic. It's perhaps not his best but this is definitely starting to get into good Junji Ito territory. This book, while it sounds like sci-fi horror, honestly is more cause core, so you have to expect those aspects. The imagery at this point is absolutely beautiful. The book is definitely worth reading just for the pictures, but I will say that again the plot is somewhat simple and the themes again are a little bit straightforward. I don't think it's the most complex, the most nuanced of his work. I liked it but did not love it, but definitely one that I'm glad to own and have a chance to revisit because again I think you can start to get a little bit more of the Junji Ito flavor with this book. Then at number eight, we have his newest book that's been translated, Deserter, and this is a collection of short stories. And while it is the newest book that's been translated, it's actually a collection of some of his older work. So it was interesting to see because these books or stories rather felt a little bit more fresh or raw compared to his newer things that he has put out. And in some ways I think that works to his advantage because I do feel like some of his newer stories are perhaps a little over polished, but at the same time some of them again were a little bit rougher. You get to see the origins of some of the themes that he continues to play with over and over again. And I like this one. My personal favorite in the collection is one involving a girl with incredibly long hair and it goes to crazy places as every story with him does. Yes. 
Then at number seven, we have Fragments of Horror. This is another short story collection. And I like this one because I felt that it leaned a lot more into Japanese lore, mythology, and culture. And so I felt that this book was really nice as a translated work because it really gave me better insight into some of the themes that I think would be very much close to home for those Japanese readers that get to experience it in the original language. And so I do think that this one is really nice for those aspects. And again, a couple of really creepy stories that stood out among the collection. Then at number six, we have Gaio or Gio. I've heard different pronunciations, so feel free to correct me down below if you know which one is correct. Um, but this is actually one cohesive story rather than a short story collection. So for those of you that are interested in his work and prefer longer fiction, this is a good one to check out. This one is just plain weird, and this is definitely at the point that I'm enjoying everything that I'm reading. So I basically highly recommend everything in the top six. And so with this book, we have have a sense of smell that is absolutely terrifying to anyone that experiences this strange smell that is coming out from the ocean and then you start to have these fish-like creatures that are growing legs and walking onto land. And so this book is just so plain weird. It is disturbing. It is gruesome. There is some great body horror in it. And again, I think this book is just so iconic of Junji Ito. I can't believe I only put it at number six. I really do recommend it. It is so good. And again, I think if you aren't a fan of short stories and you prefer something longer, this one is just a really good story from beginning to end. It was creepy. It was weird. It was like, where is this going? And some very iconic memorable imageries and panels that you will absolutely love. You'll want to just look and stare at this book and spend some time with the pictures. Then at number five, we have Shiver, which is possibly my favorite cover of all of his collected work. And this is a short story collection. I will say I really enjoyed some of the stories involving Greece. And there's a bonus story that involves a fashion model. And yeah, just really nice. At this point, I'm getting consistent short stories that over and over again, I enjoy each one and would definitely recommend. Then at number four, we have Lovesickness, which is a cohesive story following a town where young women go and stand on corner sides looking to get their fortune told. However, this beautiful man comes there and what he tells them causes them to commit suicide. And so the story goes from there. This is a book that did take a little bit to get started, but I got really wrapped up in the narrative. I again think it's very iconic of Junji Ito. And again, this is one with huge content warnings for suicide. I'd pretty much say that if that is something that you find very triggering. Junji Ito's work may not be for you because he definitely is not sensitive to that topic and uses it constantly as a plot device as well as really doing some terrible things to his female characters. So again, I wouldn't call him a feminist by any means, but the story itself was intoxicating as the title would suggest and there is some other stories that are tied up in this collection and I thought they were beautiful. Definitely one of my favorites the year that I read it and would highly recommend. Then at number three, we have Smashed. This is another short story collection. And the reason it is so high on this list is that while I loved or enjoyed most of the short stories in this one, this book contains the short story Earthbound, which if you remember it, in my opinion, is one of his best short stories ever. It is so harrowing, so emotional. And when you find out what is happening because it is set in this world where people are just standing with their arms held up. And once you figure out what's going on. Oh my goodness, this story just blew my breath away. It was just difficult to read, but in the best possible way. So for that short story alone, this book is so high up on my list. Then at number two, we have Venus in the Blind Spot, which is yet again another short story collection. And I just want to recommend this one because in my opinion, it's just one of his strongest collections where typically you say there's some stories you like and some stories you don't. In this case, I basically loved every single one. The first story in the collection involves a situation that was very timely when it came out or at least was translated because it really shows or the challenges surrounding being close to other people physically and really almost endorses the need for isolation which was very um, timely when it came out here in Canada in 2020. So I just really found this book connected on so many levels for me. It was very topical, very fascinating. And again, I just think iconic Junji Ito. You cannot go wrong with this collection. Really love it and would love to see more people read it. And finally at number one, you can probably guess, but yes, it is Uzumaki, which is a story that is set 
a small town where people see spirals that cause them to go crazy. This is a book that I picked up because so many people recommend to me and I'll be honest, when I first picked it up, I thought that the premise sounded really, really stupid, but it was my first time reading Junji Ito and my goodness, he blew away my expectations. I consider this book to be a masterpiece. It is a five-star read for me and it is incredibly psychological. It really got in my head. I saw spirals everywhere after reading this one and it really is terrifying if you allow yourself to get immersed in the story. The artwork is incredible and it really is a fantastic place to start. So obviously in the number one position, this is my personal recommendation where to start. It is a longer book, but it is well worth your time. Everything in there really adds to the story. And so I highly recommend this one here. Absolutely love it. And I would love to know for those of you, is this your number one book or is another one in your number one position for Junji Ito? So just to summarize, I obviously really love Junji Ito's work and would recommend him as long as you're not put off by the content warnings because definitely there is harm to animals, to people, tons of violence, very gruesome imagery in fact all throughout these stories as well as content warnings for suicide and particularly I will say that his treatment of women is not the most feminist but if you can look past those aspects I do think that he's an incredible author incredible storyteller and artist and I really do love his work so I would love more people to check him out if you are looking to start as I mentioned in my rankings I think that his best short story collection is Venus in the blind spot which I want to recommend because in my opinion there really isn't a bad short story in here. Each one is very good and easy to follow and also this is very reminiscent of his style and work and so if you like this you're going to have a good sense of how you're going to feel about the rest of his stories. And if you want to go with a longer fiction one it's a bit more of a commitment but definitely worthwhile. I do recommend Uzumaki, my personal favorite. This is the book that made me fall in love with him as an author and so hopefully it will give you the same experience. It's definitely one you want to take your time with. You don't want to rush through. You want to spend time looking at those images and hopefully get that same same psychological experience. So that is it for this video. I would love to hear down below of the books I talked about. Which ones are you planning on checking out from Junji Ito? Which ones are your favorite? If you're new to Junji Ito, I would love to hear if I've inspired you to pick up his work. And if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I do read a lot of horror, thriller, science fiction, and fantasy. You could help me out by sharing this video around online, giving it a thumbs up, hitting the little notification bell, and dropping a comment, even if it's just a little, I don't know, creepy ghost or something. It all helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. Anyway, I am going to let you go here. Love to hear from you down in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.